New tonight at 11, 20 families from here in Indiana and in Florida, Nevada, Louisiana have all answered the call from the Hamilton County Coroner's Office. They're collecting DNA to identify victims of suspected serial killer Herb Baumeister. Our Emily Longnecker spoke again tonight with the man spearheading all of this. Here's more on the response he's gotten and why he hopes it's just the beginning. It's been 10 days since the Hamilton County Coroner put out a call to the public asking for DNA from people with male family members who disappeared in the mid 80s to mid 90s. Men who may have been victims of suspected serial killer Herb Baumeister. Men whose remains may still be buried on Baumeister's former property in Westfield or whose remains might have already been recovered years ago but never identified. We've pleaded for people to come and provide comparison samples. And I know I have gotten calls from all over the United States. So far, Hamilton County Coroner elect Jeff Jellison has received 20 DNA samples from family members, some from people who don't know what happened to their missing loved ones, others from people whose loved ones have already been identified but want to know if more of their remains are out there. They want closure. They, they want to know. Uh, they want their loved ones remains returned to them uh, so that they can kind of close that chapter of their life. That closure is going to take some time though. Indiana State Police will be in charge of developing DNA profiles from the samples provided by family members and putting those profiles into a national database. Out of the thousands of remains found on Baumeister's property, experts have told Jellison DNA can only be extracted from about 100 bones. DNA profiles from those samples will also be put into that database to see if there's a match with the DNA samples from family. All 100 could be one person. You don't know. We, we, we don't know who we have. Jellison says one thing's for certain, though. Those answers will never be found unless more people come forward to give samples of their DNA. We've got all of these remains, but unless we have comparison samples, we, we, we're going to come to a halt pretty quickly. And everyone deserves closure. For Emily, sure. there is a lot going on here. What's the next steps for the investigation? Well, the coroner's office is going to be meeting this Friday with all the partners involved in this effort to figure that out. Like when the remains and DNA samples taken from families can be sent to the Indiana State Police for testing and possible matching. And when will they be back out at Fox Hollow Farm? Well, they will be back out. They're not sure of the timeline yet, but investigators will be working with some ground penetrating radar at Baumeister's former property to see if there are more remains there that they still need to recover, but they do hope that more people will come forward with DNA samples. At this okay. Point. Well, thank you for bringing us this story. It's a fascinating story, and more importantly, the families need to be able to wrap this chapter up. Absolutely. Thank Absolutely. you. Well, this case, of course, of course, dates back decades, and we've been all over recent developments. This renewed push for DNA and how the University of Indianapolis is helping identify remains. And our cameras were at Fox Hollow Farm over the weekend when cadaver dogs searched the property for the first time. Since then, 13 News confirmed the dogs hit on 20 different locations at Baumeister's former home in Westfield. That means the dogs indicated there could be human remains in those spots now marked by red flags. Our in-depth coverage of the Baumeister case continues online. There you can read all of our past stories and for people who believe they could know someone connected to the investigation, we've got contact information for the coroner's office up there as well. It's all right now at WTHR.com.